Amanda Saladin here from Love Life Yarn and today we're going to be knitting this sweet little polar bear right here. I haven't given him a name yet but my boys are already fighting over him so I'm gonna let one of them name him. You can see I gave him some little paw markings um, and I just I really love how it turned out. It is all knit on straight needles so there's no knitting in the round required. These are a size US size 8 5 millimeter. And this yarn is Red Heart Huga Fur. I always want to call it Higgy still. Um, in my head, that's what I say. But the fur yarn, which is really good. I have the uh, rest of it here that I didn't use. So this is what I have left from a skein. So I could probably make two of these little guys out of here easily. And he is knit in pieces and then seamed up. He even has a little tail. Check out his tail. I love it. I'm very, very happy with this. this. is my first knit animal design. I've done crochet and super thrilled. I hope you love them as much as I do. So are you ready? All you're going to need is the fur yarn, your straight needles, a yarn needle for sure to seam it up and some stuffing. Okay. And then I've used safety eyes and a safety nose, but you don't have to use those. And in fact, if you're using them for small children, I would recommend not doing that. So are you ready to make this little guy? Let's get started. All the basic pieces are knit flat. Like you can see this, this is a leg. So it's knit flat and then you seam it up. Here's my one that I've seamed. You can see the seam hides really well in this fur yarn. At first you can kind of tell and then you like fluff it up some. And this is the side I seamed till the way you can fluff it up and then you can't tell where it is. So this right here, you knit this and it becomes this. So I'll show you some of the techniques. I'm not going to do all of it, obviously, because it's very basic. Um, knit, we knit in the front and the back and we knit two together. And then I'll show you how to seam, like, you know, to grab, pull the stitches tied or, or gather them and then seam it up. And then I'll show you the final assembly of everything. So here we have, I said, the leg. And this is what it looks like when it's flat. Arms are the same way. The uh, body and the head are made where you have a few stitches left at the end and you take it off and cinch them tight. So first of all, I'm going to show you how I do all my stuff with an ear. So I haven't made my ears just yet. I haven't, I haven't so I'm going to show you with that. So let me, I cast on this way. So cast on in your preferred method. I like to do the crochet cast on. And for the ear, I only need four. So I already have a slip knot on here. And I wrap it around, pull it through, wrap it. Here's number two, wrap it, number three, and then the last one, I just put this loop on here. So there we go. Four nice and easy stitches cast on. You can use that method for any of it, or you can use that. I also, like one day I forgot my hook, I did the knitted cast on, which, you know, you just knit into a stitch and then put the stitch on this, which is really nice as well. So here's four. I just you knit. There's no purling, so you just knit. So if you're not familiar with it, you insert and this is the fur so the first one always for me is a little hard when I first cast on other than that this yarn's been really great to work with and make sure I'm grabbing the right one here I left a really long tail for seaming and I have tried to learn continental and I've done videos for like crocheters to knit with continental and I just I find that it's just quicker for me to do the um, English method so whatever way you normally get you just wrap around and pull through. So our first one, we're just going to knit these four stitches. So I can, it's hard to do it on camera. Um, I am a much slower knitter than a crocheter, but I'm not quite this slow normally. So you knit four, these four stitches for an ear. So you would knit however many it calls for. And there's that. And you can you see, you can see one thing I like about it is yes, it is fuzzy. But you can see your stitches. So even when I crochet with this yarn, I really like it because it's fur 
but you can easily discern your stitches. It's a little obviously easier on a needle than crochet, but I can easily feel it with crochet and everything. So the next one is an increase row. And the way you increase is this, you insert it like you're knitting and go ahead and wrap and pull the yarn through. But then you want to knit in the back. So what you do is you come back here, sorry, it's hard to do this on here, to the back loop and you put it in like this and you wrap around and pull it through again. And then throw that loop off where we one has had one stitch, now we have two. So that's how you increase. And then this one I have to work even a little bit and I'll come back and show you how to knit two together. And then that's all the basic stitches that you need to know. Okay, now I went ahead and I knit five rows, working on my little ear here. And now in the next row, if you'll follow the written pattern, you'll see that you knit two together. Now this can be a little tricky with this yarn because sometimes the my needle gets in the little loop from the row below. So what I have found when I'm doing this is if I pull down on the piece, you can see like it stretches the loops. It doesn't affect the finished piece, but I can actually, let me try to get this up here, get underneath this one better and go through. So you're putting it th through both of the strands there and then you wrap your yarn and pull through. Now, Occasionally, I, I could tell when I put my yarn in the wrong place because it wasn't just one strand coming through. It was real thick, and I was like, oh, that's not right. I'm not, that's not the way I do it. And then you toss that one off, those two off, and now you have one stitch where you had two. So instead, so you pull it down, and you put it in here. Oops, see, I'm getting the wrong one. It can be a little tricky sometimes. There we go. And there's the next one, and then I would do it again. And that's how you decrease. We're making the body and the head. Here's the body right here. We're going to cinch the top closed. Cinch one end closed, but the body is the top. And then sew the seam down the back. Like I said, this yarn is really good about hiding its seam. So you can see the front and the back here. And then we sew the bottom closed. And so here I have the head the body away there and keep getting little things on my yarn <laughs> and so I have nine stitches left here for the head and I'm going to just like you close the top of a beanie I have left a very long <laughs> piece of yarn here I'm going to grab one of my yarn needles get one nice big one right here and thread the end through. So leave, you do want a nice long end so that you can sew it closed. And then thread it through. And the head and the body are the same as far as this goes. You're going to just slip each one. I used to, I like to do my pearl wise, it doesn't really matter. Like I'm purling, just slide them off here. Okay, and then you can put your needle away and pull it through. I have a long tail, like I said, so it takes it a minute. But this is the same way you close the top of a beanie and you close it there. And then you use, it's up to you to decide which side you think is the right or the wrong side. To me, they look pretty much the same. And so now we're going to do the mattress stitch. And believe me, with this, it does not really matter so much if you're not perfect with your mattress stitch as long as you're making sure these even up so if you're not really used to seaming you might want to take safety pins and like pin it here pin it here you know just a couple times especially the longer part like the body to make sure that it's turning out even I've done a lot of mattress stitching with knitting and crocheting so I don't worry about it too much I just keep checking my progress so you can see I went I just reached on the side and went to get it closer if I can, just underneath. It doesn't need, but this one it doesn't even really matter. When you're doing like, you know, stockinette stitch, you want to be exact with this particular yarn. It doesn't really care. So you just go side to side oh, and you grab a little bit. My yarn is so long, it's 
hard there. I think I did a little overdid it with the length of my tail here. So you just go side to side and it will start closing up that hole. And like I said, with this, it's garter stitch because it's all knit and you can't really see the individual definition. So it doesn't matter if you're in like one little strand or another. So this is a great thing if you're not used to seaming you can just um not to worry about it looking perfect especially because once you get it down a little bit so if you fluff it up like i did my body and stuff like that you can't even usually even tell after you're done where the seam is so you just go ahead and close down near the end and then you'll stuff it and then you'll close the rest of the way now when you're doing the head you will put on safety eyes and a nose so we'll want a nose here um, to find my noses. And then the E eyes, they're really, really easy to put on. I'm going to go get my eyes and safety um, nose, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so I found the nose that I want to use here and the eyes. I have, like, some kits with a lot of uh, random inexpensive ones from Amazon that I'm going to put on. And here is my face. I have not in the back so I'm gonna stuff it a little bit before I do the rest I know I want the nose here on the end so with these now the eyes and the nose I would definitely say if you are making this for a very small child please please do not use these I know they say they are safety and they hold on but I have had them come out especially with knit and crochet things that have some holes in them, which they all do because so if you're if it's for a very small child just make sure you are not using these and just embroider it you can get some yarn and embroider a little nose and some eyes but um, my youngest is almost three and he doesn't put things in his mouth so I feel comfortable using these so to use it you just push it through and it goes in really easily so that's like a dog's nose now okay you got that there and I'll you know make sure that's where I want it to be and then on the inside so you can see here that is. You want to take these and you want to press it in firmly all the way down. Okay, now that should be pretty secure. And this one definitely is. But like I said, I've had others that with other yarn that did not stay in well. And so I just caution anybody that's using them for babies. I love babies. You know, definitely don't want them to happen to any babies. So just make sure that you're doing what's safe for the age. So there's my nose, and then you can pick some stuffing. Now I'm gonna grab some here, and fiber fill. And I always shred mine some before I put it in, because I do not want big clumps of it in. And then you just kinda fill it in here. I can't test it myself as much of a dog right now. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it's going to look like a bear with the rest of it. The ears and stuff. Maybe I'll make another one with, as a dog with a, a light brown or something like that. And some more stuffing. You just stuff it quite a bit. I really want to get a, a good idea of where I should put the eyes. So I'm going to put quite a bit of my stuffing in already. Before I... Decide on eye placement. Okay. It's not all that I'm going to do. And of course, we'll close up. You close up the back the same way. I left this attached to my yarn needle. And we'll just close it up the same way we did this seam down here, which you can't even really see anymore. Just straighten it back out. Eyes are the same way. So you just decide where you want them and put them on and then close up the back so it's really up to you where you want the eyes to be and all that good stuff so just do the eyes the same way you got the same backs and we'll come back I'll show you how to do this so this will be the head and the body of course you would just close it the same way and you don't have to worry about putting the eyes or anything on and then I'll show you how to close up the arm and leg areas okay the other technique for the legs and the arms once you're finished you'll work from the bottom up and this is our cast on edge and we're going to gather it. So you just take your yarn needle and make sure you're in 
the first or second row of stitches as best you can instead so of just the fur on the edge and just start running it through so that we can gather it. So I'll just go all the way down to the end just like this. Alright, and then I'm going to pull it tight as I can and I'm going to start this over here Oop, came out. and pull it closed. Now there is a little bit of a hole right here so I'm going to close that up after I re-thread my needle. There we go. So I'll close up this little hole here. All right, it doesn't do perfect because it's not much of a seam. Then go back up here to the top. Now we have a nice closed end, and we're going to do the same technique that we did before. I should have left a longer end, so if you don't leave a long enough end, you have some up here, hopefully at the top, so try to make sure you leave long ends, and we'll just work our way. <laughs> Keeping it back and forth, just like we did before with the body, all the way up to the end, and it should look like this right here. So when we get that done, get your arms, the arms are the same way. Except they're more tapered at the top to a point, but they're done the same way where you gather this down here and then seam it up in the back. And then we'll attach them to the body. Okay, so I've got my leg all set up here. And ideally you'll have some yarn left a tail, and if you don't, then it's okay to start a new one. But I'm just going to sew the top close and it doesn't have to be you know fancy because you're not going to see this so it doesn't have to be like the mattress stitch or anything all right that just gives it closed here now i've attached to my head whoa this so close <laughs> and then, so you can see that this yarn does really well with joins and the way i attach this and i'm going to do my leg down here and that is, let's see, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna put it, you know, it's up to you to figure out where you like it for him to sit. It really needs to be more in the front. So I'm gonna do mine up here. But you just grab some of the body, like you get underneath there. And then you come back. So it's like a mattress stitch, but you're doing it between two different pieces here. And you just continue this all the way around. This is exactly what I do with the head. I actually did the head a couple times just to make sure it was secure. I had lots of yarn left over for the head, so it was easy to do. So that's how you'll put on the arms and the legs. You just keep going around wherever you feel like you want it to be attached. And then the ears are the same way. I'll show you the ear here. The ear looks like this when it's made. And then you fold it in half. And where these tails coming off here, you'll just sew the sides. And then this part down here where these, the cast off, or the cast on and the bound off edge will be where you sew it to the head. Oops. So you would just pop it on there, sew it on the same way with like mattresses. And also the little tail. And then that will complete your little guy or girl and he'll be ready to give. It It didn't take long at all to knit this up. I thought it might take longer, but with this yarn, it really just flew. And I got all my pieces and parts made and seamed up in no time. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.